Hi everyone, uh, my name is Carrie, I'm one of a company called FutureGov. Um, we make digital products for the public sector and uh, so the caveat to all of this is I'm neither a designer nor a technologist, I'm just somebody who knows stuff about problems that need solving. So I'm hoping this is a massive plea to everybody in the room to help me solve some of these problems with all of your brains, collectively. So. <laughs> so somebody better be stopping the clock. <laughs> I have these actual keys. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, so I run a company that makes digital products for the public sector. Uh, I've just spent the afternoon with a bunch of social workers, so a bunch of people who are basically on the front line of social work, talking to young people whose uh, families um, aren't places where they feel safe anymore. People, young people who um, have to kind of move into temporary accommodation. I've been talking to social workers who deal with older people who um, no longer are the person that they used to be because they've got dementia. Um, these are like super serious issues, but um, what we see, the technology that we see in these sectors, it's just completely terrible. Like imagine drop down boxes with like 32 different options that you can select from. It's like nothing you've ever seen before. And like, if I, I was saying earlier, if I were to design an event that looked the polar opposite of the place I've just been, it would be this event. Um, it, like, think like everybody's in suits, everybody's kind of like looking a bit downcast, and everyone's really stressed because there's no money. Um, so, this stuff, this cool kind of like 3D printy, roboty, lasery, unicorny stuff is great, but for me it's not solving the problems that we need to solve. And I, I really hope it's like the first step and that the public sector can start to sort of use this technology to make massive changes. What I see is like some awesome stuff and I heard some of the presentations this morning and I saw some really inspiring, great stuff which I absolutely love and I'm kind of nerdy about as well, but um, I kind of think this is really cool, but how can I use it? How can I use it in my work, which is improving public service? Um, so I'm basically just going to load you with a bunch of problems and really let's all just cross our fingers and we can solve them. But here's some of the stuff. So this guy is wearing a wearable, right? I guess, kind of. Um, but what it is is a button. So like if he falls over or is in trouble, he can press the button that's hanging around his neck. Like this is the public sector's idea of wearable technology. And this is something that like we need to change. Um, because it's kind of uh, stigmatizing to have something like huge around your neck that says I might fall over. Um, maybe useful in the pub, I'm not sure, but for this guy it's kind of like a bit um, unnecessary in his day-to-day -day life. But it's the only technology that they've got. Um, think about um, if you've got dementia and things are totally unfamiliar to you. How are you going to walk around a town that you, you, you've lived in for years but everything's unfamiliar? Is there any way that wearable technology can help people find their way and find things that are familiar to them, familiar reference points as they pass by in everyday life? Um, also, I don't know if you've noticed, but no one's got any money at the moment. So, um, this is a cool thing that I came across, but I think it's a prototype. I think it's just something that's not going to get actually made because I think like there's no funding or whatever. But it's an MIT project, um, which is a wallet that will, um, it's got a coil, a spring, an in, uh, internet connected spring, and it, it listens to your bank account, basically. The less money you have in your bank account, the harder it is to open your wallet. Um, it's called the proverbial wallet. Um, there's a bunch of other like prototypes that they made, but what I want to see is this kind of stuff. So what we're seeing right now is people who are in, in debt, they're just tipping over into debt. Um, and it feels like there must be products out there that can help them kind of get that feedback from, um, from their financial situation to help them make better decisions. Um, speaking of better decisions, the public sector is obsessed with controlling people's lives. Like we want everybody to do, um, you know, make healthy choices, uh, take the right choice for education, get a job, all of this stuff. Um, but there's actually like nobody really go, kind of going, well this is what reality is like for me. Is there any way that we can help people with things like life logging for example, so that they can sit down, say a young person can sit down with a social worker and go, look, this is what my life is like day to day. Um, kind of show a snapshot, so is there stuff that we can use to kind of give that feedback to public services, they can actually design things properly instead of just their best guess at what might help people. Um, also, this is my mate Paul, he's got no arms and legs. Um, we, we kind of mucked around and had a bit of a hack day with like um, products that we could adapt for his needs. He loves photography, he's a really keen photographer, but with no arms and no legs, that's kind of a tricky hobby to have. Um, so we kind of, you know, got some wood and some, this was like, we actually did this in this building as well. And we kind of got this um, camera stand stick. There must be a better way, right? There must be a better way to help Paul with his hobby um, than having this huge apparatus around him trying to help him take photographs day to day. Um, 
I was thinking about education and um, partly like how much I hate school, I uh, hated school when I was there, and also like how um, you hear young people, particularly um, kids in foster care, who uh, feel like school isn't really helping them. And again, we have like we put these kids through this kind of sheep dip process because we have no way of understanding what makes school different for different people. What well, if you could have some sort of like a uh, temperature gauge kind of thing that you had in the classroom where a young person, you could understand whether a young person was stressed when they were trying to learn something, whether they were relaxed in their learning environment, whether they felt comfortable, whether they were being bullied, whether they felt um, that the room was too hot or cold, whatever it might be that contributes to somebody being able to learn better. Is there any way that we can give young people something to wear or use um, that would help communicate that back to us? Because you know when you ask a kid, how was your day at school? They go, fine, it's fine. Um, what can we do to kind of encourage that conversation a bit more? Um, and this is my kind of biggest thing at the moment, right? So some, um, we were talking to some uh, foster kids about what it feels like to move home. This guy moved home 35 times. Like, they say that moving home is one of the most stressful things that a person can do. But imagine as a young person moving your home, not only your home, your school, your family, your friends, your surroundings, um, 35 times. It's so disruptive. But there are very simple things that make people, young people feel safe. And things like, for example, um, the smell of home. You know, we all have that smell. It's like our washing powder or, you know, the, our mum's kind of fragrance or whatever it happens to be that makes that smell of home for you. Is there some way that we can actually kind of weave that into the fabric for clothing um, so that young people are reminded of where they've come from and they don't feel so scared at night when they're in a stranger's house and they've got no idea what the rules are? My final thought is about um, aid work and relief because um, this is kind of like one of the problems of coordinating aid on the ground. You've got great things like Ushahidi which map um, uh, the need for aid in, kind of globally. But um, is there a way of understanding where um, resources are actually distributed? Is there a way of tracking volunteers through their trainers so that you've kind of geolocated where they are um, so that you can tell uh, whether um, you've got enough people in one place and you need to move a bunch to another place? Is there a way of using um, kind of feet on the ground uh, as a way of distributing aid? That's um, really my final thought. Um, in summary, it's about talking to um, real people and understanding what the problems are that need to be solved with this technology rather than building um, unicorns and robots. Thanks for listening.